Hi, and welcome to Satellite 101. For the next several minutes, we are going to lift the curtain and demystify the process of how Dish Network programming gets to a customer's home. My name is Adam, and I'm part of retail services here at Dish Network. And my name is Jim, and I'm part of the Dish Network channel training team. Though there are many aspects to the satellite TV business, it's always good for you to be familiar with the behind-the-scenes process that makes satellite television possible. Absolutely, Jim. You know, delivering 100% digital Dish Network service to customers' homes can seem complicated and hard to understand. Mm -hmm. And while it is pretty complex, today we're going to break it down for you into five basic steps. That's right. And after covering these five steps, you'll have a good introduction to how satellite technology works. In fact, Adam, I thought we could follow the signal path of one of my favorites, the Discovery Channel. I love that channel, Jim, especially in Dish Network High Definition. Let's get started. So the long journey that the Discovery Channel signal is going to take starts with step one, the programmers sending out their shows from their own studios located all over the country. There are tons of great programmers Dish Network works with, from premium networks like HBO and Showtime to sports networks like ESPN, or of course the Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. Basically, programmers work with Dish Network to have their shows distributed to customers over our network of satellites. To do this, they can use either fiber optic cable or their own satellites to deliver their programming signals to Dish Network. Now you know, Dish Network carries only 100% digital programming and offers the lowest all digital programming packages in the nation. Now we do this because converting analog signals into bits of digital data allows for a stronger and more reliable transmission of information. And luckily, most programmers provide their shows to Dish Network already in digital form. The Discovery Channel signal, for instance, arrives at Dish Network already digitized and ready to be processed. So the Discovery Channel signal traveled out from the programmer studio and has now reached step two in our journey, the Dish Network Uplink Centers. Now, Dish Network has two major uplink centers, one in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and another in Gilbert, Arizona, and they are definitely the heart of Dish Network. And you know, Jim, there are hundreds of people at the uplink centers constantly keeping an eye on everything from the quality of the programming signals to the health of the satellites floating up into space. Mm -hmm. That's right, and the uplink centers are essential to getting high-quality digital programming out to our customers. And it's here in the process that the Discovery Channel signal must be compressed and encrypted. Compressed and encrypted. Can we get a definition of that, Jim? Motion Picture Experts Group was started in 1988 as a working group with an ISO-IEC, the aim of defining standards for digital compression, audiovisual signal. Yeah, yeah let's break that down and take a closer look at what that really means. Well, the first process that takes place at the uplink center is compression. Now, the Discovery Channel signal will be carried up to the Dish Network satellites on waves called electromagnetic frequencies, but each frequency can only carry much programming. That's why compression becomes really important, because it allows more programming to be carried on each frequency. Now, to do this, Dish Network uses two different kinds of compression. MPEG-2 and MPEG-4. MPEG stands for Moving Pictures Experts Group, and it's a compression standard used for digital video. MPEG-2 is a common level of compression used for many different types of video. You know, a helpful way to think about compression can be to imagine those electromagnetic frequencies as pipelines. The more we can compress the programming signals, the more signals we can fit through a single pipeline or frequency. And the need to make signals even more condensed is where MPEG-4 compression really comes in. MPEG-4 is the latest in compression technology. It's able to compress video and audio signals even more than MPEG-2 and in much higher quality. MPEG-4 signals take up less room on our satellites, so MPEG-4 compression allows us to deliver even more programming to our customers, especially as we continue to add more and more HD to our lineups, Jim. In addition to being compressed, the Discovery Channel signal also needs to be encrypted so that only Dish Network customers can access it. Using a process called conditional access encryption, we put a lock on the signal that only Dish Network customers have the key to. You know, Jim, encryption is really important because it allows us to make sure that only customers who are paying for Dish Network service have access to their programming. So, Jim, now that the Discovery Channel signal is compressed and encrypted, what happens next? Well, now we've reached step three, and the Discovery Channel signal is ready to leave the uplink center and be sent up to the Dish Network satellites. And Dish Network has not just one, but many satellites located around the equator in areas of space called orbital locations. You can think of orbital locations as the universe's most expensive parking lots. They're areas of property and space that Dish Network has the rights to park our satellites in. Some orbital locations hold a couple of satellites, while others contain just one. But no matter which orbital location they are located in, all of our satellites sit more than 22,000 miles above Earth in a ring called the Clark Belt. And basically, satellites placed in this geosynchronous orbit, called the Clark Belt, rotate at the same pace that the Earth does. If we couldn't place satellites in this type of orbit, then the customer's antenna would be sometimes unable to receive signals from satellites because of the rotation of the Earth. 
Can you imagine, Jim, if customers weren't able to watch television for hours and hours at a time and had to wait for the Earth to rotate? Satellite TV the way we know it simply wouldn't be possible. Well, now that the Discovery Channel signal is up at the Dish Network satellites, I think we're ready to move on to step four. Right. In step four, the Discovery Channel signal is broadcast back down to Earth using a part of the satellite called transponders. The main job of transponders is pretty simple, Jim. They move programming signals from the satellites back down to Earth. Each satellite holds multiple transponders and is capable of amplifying and transmitting hundreds of channels at a time down to Dish Network customer homes. But it's not that simple as flipping a switch and beaming down the programming, especially when you consider that not all satellites cover all areas of the United States, not all programming needs to go to all areas, and not all satellites carry the same programming. And that's why satellite footprints become important. A satellite footprint is the area on the Earth that the satellites are able to transmit signals to. It might be helpful to think of the satellite footprints as a beam of light from a flashlight. The beams can either be very targeted like a spotlight or very large like a floodlight. So the size of the footprint can range from a few hundred miles to a few thousand miles. But not all satellites use the same kind of footprints. There are actually two types, CONUS and spot beams. Now the first type, CONUS, stands for Continental United States. CONUS footprints can cover all or most of the United States, which is thousands of miles and are typically used for national programming. For example, my favorite, the Discovery Channel, would be broadcast using CONUS footprints, since it's broadcast all over the country. The second type are called spot beams, which are footprints that cover limited areas, much smaller than CONUS footprints, usually just a few hundred miles. Spot beams are typically used for programming such as regional sports networks and local stations like ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. These are channels which have a targeted instead of nationwide audience. So a station like the local Denver NBC affiliate could be broadcast using a spot beam since it has a localized audience and is only going to be watched by people in Colorado. All right, the signal has been broadcast back down to earth from the Dish Network satellites and reached the customer's antenna at their home. And that means the Discovery Channel signal has reached step five and its final destination. From the customer's Dish Network antenna, the Discovery Channel signal is sent to the receiver where it is decompressed and unencrypted and finally displayed on the customer's TV screen. And that's the end. So let's recap the entire signal path. Now from its own studios, the Discovery Channel signal was sent to Dish Network's uplink center where the digital signal was compressed and encrypted. Then it was sent up to Dish Network satellites where it was received and then sent back down to Earth to the awaiting Dish Network customers at their homes. Well, as we've just seen, there's a lot that goes into bringing Dish Network services into customers' homes. We've covered some steps that most people probably never even think about while enjoying great programming on Dish Network, such as the Discovery Channel. But hopefully we've been able to demystify how Dish Network delivers quality programming all across the country.